My name is Melissa Dawson, and I am the host of Libertarian Party TV. Today, I will be interviewing a young, liberty-minded man, Jabril Ballantine, who brings new meaning to the words hope and change. I became affiliated with the Libertarian Party um, pretty much because of my frustrations with the Republican Party. Um, you know, I believe in the principles of, of, of personal liberty, of um, life, liberty, pursuit of happiness, of liberty and justice for all. Uh, you know, I believe in those things. The Republican Party at its founding was, was founded for those reasons. Um, it was founded to protect and preserve the rights of the individual. However, in recent years, well, not even in recent years, for several years now, it has strayed from that. And you can't really tell the difference between them and the, and the Democrats. And why are you a libertarian? Well, the, the evolution started with the recent presidential elections. You know, I was trying to figure out who's going to be my candidate of choice. And the only candidate that really started to make sense, the major party candidate, was, was Ron Paul. And it just seemed completely different from what the Republicans were talking about. And it just seemed like something that it's like, my gosh, he's, he's a Republican. So I started to look more into, you know, Ron Paul and found out that his underpinnings, you know, even though he's cloaked as a Republican, his underpinnings are, are libertarian. He's a life member of the Libertarian Party. And I just see he's just for, throughout his career has been, has stood on those principles, hasn't been wavering like most politicians end up wavering. And, you know, that's what I believed we need from politicians, people that are unwavering, sound on their convictions. And so I started to look in to the Libertarian Party, and you see the tagline, the party of principle. And you know, those things mean something. They, they should mean something. It shouldn't be uh, a message of expediency or anything like that. It should be, what are your principles, and we're going to stand on those principles. And from what I read of the Libertarian Party, um, that's what it was about, standing on those principles. And those principles are more important than, than anything else. Recently, you left the D.C. Republican Party. In your resignation letter, you described the, your reasons for leaving. Specifically, you said that you do not believe the D.C. GOP will be able to have control over the D.C. government anytime in the near future. Um, you also stated the um, D.C. Republican Committee does not accurately represent the city, having 100 percent white leadership in a a city that's 60 percent black. Knowing that these are your reasons, why are you choosing to work with the Libertarian Party? My hopes are that it can be different. E.E. Um, e. Schatzschneider wrote a book on um, party politics. Uh, he was a renowned political scientist and president of one of those political scientist organizations. Uh, he's defined a political party as twofold, either an organization that has control of the government or has the ability to control the government in the near future. And so you're right, the DC GOP, they, they have neither. There is no elected Republican in the city, um, and there's no um, belief that any Republican will be elected in the near future in this city. And, but meanwhile, the people suffer. So it begs the question, does the party really care about the people? in the city. You're looking at a city that is controlled by Democrats, but we have the worst um, education system in the country. We have one of the worst health care systems. We have one of the highest crime rates. We have one of the highest rates of unemployment in the country. And I could go on and on and on about how we're excelling at the wrong end of the spectrum. In your blog article about Obama, you mentioned that you fear the black community becoming complacent in the political process now that we have an African-American president. Uh, what are some examples that you see where the black community become, can become involved to really make the most of this presidency? Mm. You know, I, I said it's the, it's the best of times and the worst of times, you know, <laughs> because um, even as a Republican, the, 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 the Obama candidacy was was very monumental as a conservative and I say why because the biggest problem that we have in the inner cities in the urban communities is the tyranny of the government and we have that through one party rule most inner cities are ruled by Democrats and most inner cities are run amok by a Democrat 
Why? Not because black people just love Democrats, but because by and large, we don't even pay attention. It's going to be incumbent upon us, the black community, to stay watchful. Not to say, oh, you're doing this because he's a black man. But I, I blogged about it on one of my other sites. And I said that what we need to do now, and this is an opportunity for us to become more versed in the principles of liberty, more versed in the Constitution, understand the rules of the game, understand the rules of this country, start using this opportunity to educate youth, to give them some hope that they can be something other than an athlete or a movie star or a rapper or, or whatever, 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 that there are paths out of poverty that do not mean you must be in showbiz. We can use this as an opportunity to empower the community. I said, I don't need Obama to do anything for the black community. The best thing that he can do is be a good president, be a good black man, be a good black father, be a good black husband. After that, the rest of the responsibility comes upon us. In talking about freedom and liberty, you say that freedom can be given, but liberty must be taken, that we each must play a part in preserving our liberty and the American dream. I think most Americans feel that our country and that our government has really gotten away from us. How do you propose that we take back control of the American dream of our liberty, and what are small steps that really anybody could do? Um, well, you're right, freedom can be given. Liberty must be taken, that's what I said. Um, for instance, they gave the slaves freedom. No one can give us liberty. We have to decide to take it. And to this day, that's been the problem as to why um, inner city black communities, so on and so forth, are having such difficulty because we've never taken and seized hold of liberty. Small steps that, that we can do to take our liberties back, get involved. Um, I mean, that sounds so cliche, but, you know, read a constitution, you know, um, force these public school systems to start teaching civics again. It makes no sense to me. We're supposed to be educating people to be good citizens, but they have no civics courses. How do they understand what it means to be a citizen? Where is the interest going to be to actually read a constitution. I said already we live here in DC. Makes no sense to me. So many kids that I've worked with at these various high schools graduating, never been down on the mall. Whoa. Everything that you see in your history book is right down there on the mall. Never been there. Those are the type of things that start inspiring people to read further. You know, those are the types of things that inspired me to pick up Alex de Tocqueville and, you know, pick up Ben Franklin's autobiography and, and pick up, you know, John Locke's work. And it was going to those places and reading the inscriptions on the walls and seeing what various snippets of what people said that, that said, you know what, let me dig a little further. But if all we're seeing is the mess in our own community, what you're going to dig for? What are you going to find? 